Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. In this one I have for you a 3 vs 3 on tension and I'm going to be playing with the 5th Panzer Division. So this game was absolutely incredible. It's probably one of the best games of Warno I've ever played and yeah <laughs> there's a lot to look forward to. It starts a little slow and then really really ramps up so sit back relax and enjoy but let's just have a quick look around tension. This map is absolutely gorgeous. We have this real residential area over here more industrial areas dotted around and on this left hand side where I'm going to be fighting today it's really quite open. I did start with a bunch of Fliegerfasts, which helped me shoot down the Mi-24K. The Mi-24K start is still actually something that I find quite common, even though the availability of the Mi-24K has been significantly reduced on deck that, decks that have them. I think most decks only have one Mi-24K, and losing it at the start is pretty rough now, uh, because the Mi-24K, it's an exceptional optic attack helicopter, which is really rare. So, wasting that early on, not really a good idea these days, but this time around, managing to use the Triple Flicker Faust and the Roland 3, of course, here to help shoot that down. I have a Leopard 2A4 uh, leading the way with the Jaeger Aufkader here and a couple of Fernspeer on the flanks. I've also got a second Roland 3 at the back, and I've got the Milan 2 here in the Fuchs Milan heading up the right hand side, and I've got a Leopard 1A5 that's going to be creeping through the trees here in order to hold down this left road with the help of the furnished beer, of course, because these guys uh, have pretty good recon. And poor Fuchs Milan. Going to be targeted by multiple H gems, so I'm just going to be unloading my Milan 2 and backing him off. One thing you might have noticed is as soon as I unloaded the infantry, the H gems stopped tracking the vehicle. That's because my opponent in this case had the don't target transports on or don't target empty transports on which the intention of which is to basically stop you wasting ammunition but in some cases when it comes to units or transports that do have weapons they I mean it can also stop you from getting kills that you would rather like to have anyway tornado IDS going to be coming in there with the Cluster HE and absolutely wiping out anything that's in that complex. Meanwhile, BRM goes down facing off my Leopard 2A3. Now a T8M coming in. I just about managed to get the smoke to stop that from killing me. And we're able to shoot it down with the help of the Roland 3s. So French Beer on the left getting chewed up by a BTR 80 at the moment and do end up going down. The trouble with the French Beer at the moment is they don't have any AT. So solely reliant on their MP5, the HK21 and the G3A3 marksman rifle. It's uh, pretty rough for them against enemy vehicles. In this case the BTR-80 is going to be trying to probe on the left side after killing my recon unit but my Leopard 1A5 is in position to take care of that and my Leopard 2A3 leader is going to be limping back to get fixed up. And I'm of course going to be bringing in a supply as soon as possible. The Munkat on the way with its 2,500 supply. And I've also got a couple of Jaeger Aufkader that are going to be joining me on the front to provide me with recon, particularly on this left hand side. The BMP 2s trying to push up here just about managed to unload their infantry in time before I managed to kill one. I do manage to smoke to avoid the Metis squads from getting their HGMs on target, and the 2A4 is going to be taking pot shots. From this tree line. Jaeger Aufkala will soon arrive and they'll be able to help us break down those infantry. The wonderful thing about the Jaeger Aufkala squad is it does have a lot of men. <laughs> There's 11 men in the squad and these guys on their own are more than capable of taking out other infantry squads whilst also providing you with that juicy recon. The MP2 on the left, second one gets taken out after the smoke dissipates and the 105 makes that cook off. H64 Apache on the way to support the Jaeger Aufkala against those Madastrauki. Because I don't really want to like charge in here with the Leopard 1A5. That's always going to be kind of weak to those Asia gems. The 2A4, I don't really want to take it, uh, make it take unnecessary chipping damage when I'm going to have to deal with a lot of TATBVs. 
with the Apache here able to kill the Ikla as it reveals itself. And now we're able to absolutely demolish those Modestraki Metis. So that Apache really putting in work there very, very nicely indeed. So far, so good. Quite a methodical start for me on the left hand side and we've traded pretty well having now taken out both the BMPs here the Metis um, the helicopter and also we took down the T8M so uh, Whistler here having a hard time Alouette going to be joining me for some air recon just so that we can see that any reinforcements coming up on the left hand side we're also going to be moving forwards the Jaegers now try and take control of these tree lines up on the left here. I can't ignore this area because if I want to push into this sector and they bring up reinforcements on top of this hill, there's a very easy way for them to just flank and shoot me in the side as I'm approaching. Uh, but multiple T-80BVs are going to be in my way. The Leopard 2A4, very, very strong. This was on the previous patch. They have since been nerfed. Uh, the motion accuracy is 10% lower than their static accuracy now. And I believe the armor has been changed, the armor values as well. So this is when Leopards were very, very nice in this matchup against the T-80BV. And we're able to take advantage of that there, getting our guns on target to kill the T-80BV very quickly. Now in this situation, the gun hasn't changed. So the T-80BV still will have died. It's just my Leopard 2A4 taking a hit from that HGM probably would have taken a bit more damage. That's kind of the main difference now uh, because the Leopard 2A4 and 2A3 have less armor. The A64 is fixed up thanks to the Mankat and we're doing pretty well here. So now I'm going to be investing into a couple of F4 FATs. You can see that in the bottom left. If I can clean out the T-80BVs, then it will basically leave the Leopards here as the primary force modifier on this front, and I can just clean them out uh, very, very nicely without having to worry too much about the enemy armor. The other thing is, if I can keep eyes on the Strela 10 M3, my F4 FAT can actually dive that and kill it itself, even though it is technically AA. Uh, Spetsnaz Vetka do get found and cleaned out thanks to the Jaeger Alfkala moving forwards. But what you might notice is we are unfortunately losing quite significantly at the moment. The plus four here being because of this one sector. This is a plus two sector. So us losing it and them capturing it means they are actually on a plus four advantage overall on the map. You can see at the top here they have 13 points. We have nine. So Leopard 2A4 now going to be pushing back up again, keeping the Leopard 2A3 nearby, making sure that that's providing leadership for both of these so that the accuracy is being increased quite dramatically. And that is allowing us to get some really good shots here on the T-80BVs. Way too late on any smoke there. No chance whatsoever. Now we've got to deal with the Conkers. Those Conkers, of course, are going to be able to do quite a lot of damage if they get gems on target. But they've been placed too close together so the splash damage is really affecting their ability to get the job done but you can see there's still another hgm coming in from the side there and that is gonna pop my 2a4 there completely which is really really unfortunate and now the mi 24v coming in smashing my finchpier which were providing lovely recon for me the 2A4 and 2A3 on the left currently having to deal with the T-80BV, but the mi 24 at here with the Kokon missiles is causing problems. Now Leopard 1A5 is advancing to try and snipe the BTR-80 and the Strela 10M3, and you can see I'm also now bringing in the F4F, so one of those is directly targeting the Strela. We're getting a, a potentially a little bit impatient here, especially since the Leopard uh, would have been able to clean that out easily. The F4F there slinging a missile into the T-80BV and it's an absolute slaughter on this left hand side as we continue to wipe out uh, units but going to kind of have to get a move on a little bit but not at this moment had I realised that our team is not doing so well. As soon as I do realise you'll see the pedal hit the metal and uh, we will really start to ramp up this game so f4fs did a good job those at planes not managing to finish off the strata 10m but certainly damaged it enough to route it and allow the 1a5 to get the kill 
so that was good. Ronin 3 is kind of creeping forwards here to kill off the MI-24Vs. The Ronin 3 does have 3,000 meters range against helicopters, so very, very effective. There's, I don't think there's a single HGM that has like a range higher than that. But in the middle now, plus eight, as unfortunately Grim Guy being pushed out of this sector as well. Uh, the opponent's managing to get in a command there. So now only two minutes and 20 seconds left until we lose. F4F is going to be coming in here looking for the kill onto the MI-24B. Plenty of time on target should find us the kill, and sure it does. Now 2A3 engaging the BV once again. Engine damaged is good for us because it's going to severely slow down that tank, but not the best micro out of my opponent here on this left-hand side. But here comes another F4F to try and hit the other MI-24. We are being shot at by AA all the way. But slowly but surely dismantling my opponent. And you can see the, here the layout that you really want to strive for. Spreading out multiple recon units. Keeping my tanks also nice and spread out. Then I've got sort of my flanks covered by the Milan somewhat. And here we go. So this is why I'm being super aggressive now because I've just noticed that we're losing. And uh, there is only two minutes and 20 seconds until we lose with a plus four, which is really, really bad. So I'm pushing in really, really hard. Unfortunately, one of my tanks is going to get popped there by the Conkers. Just goes straight through the side armor. Conkers M finding a really, really good kill. Another Conkers going to be in my way, so we're going to have to deal with that. And I'm just pushing as hard as I can, basically, in order to uh, clear this out and prevent this plus four. Because if I capture this on the left completely, then it will give the plus four, uh, well, two points back to us, I guess. Uh, it will equal things out, is what I mean. Uh, the Marder 183 is going to be coming in to help the center here. I've also brought up an Iltis Führungs just to try and uh, clean things up with that sector and put us actually in the lead, which would be very nice if possible. So Apache, realizing there's not really any AA left, and the Apache's just going absolutely ham right now, just destroying everything. We even managed to get on top of his mortar there, the Nonna. Leopard 105 finding another T-80BV is not where he wants to be, but we have managed to get the 2A3 into this sector now. And once we full cap that, the plus two will be taken away from our opponents. So things will go back to equal at the top, 11 to 11. And now if my martyrs can get into this sector and clear it out, then I can actually give us the advantage in this game. So Apache moving over here manages to kill off the Igler and the Spes Razvedka not able to finish the job. So just going to be having the Apache fall back towards the Mankat here so that it can be repaired. A T8M is coming in for my tank and I'm not going to notice in time the 2A3 ends up going down. Igla pops out of this building, shoots down the Apache as well. So losing stuff on the left hand side because I was focusing on microing the engagement here. Very, very loud engagement. <laughs> the Marder 1A3 is supporting the Panzergrenz pushing in there. Ronin 3 having trouble against the BTR-80. It's actually causing an unwelcome amount of damage. Yeah, losing some big tanks here has put me in a bit of a predicament because if he keeps bringing in T-80BVs, which he has been so far, then this is going to be kind of an untenable position because I'm so far away from my spawn. But alas, we did manage to take back the sector here and we're now counting a plus two and the counter-attack is on. We really need to just try and win <laughs> as quickly as possible to avoid our opponents getting any more score and then obviously winning the game from that so <laughs> we are definitely on a bit of a time limit btr80 is going to move forward here chasing down my 
supply. Yeah, after that, gonna save the day with the Panzerfaust 44. The Mountcut getting into a good position here to repair the Leopard 1A5, the Ronin 3, the 2A3. And uh, meanwhile, on the right hand side, most of my Marders. I was going to say they've gone down, but they're, they're mostly damaged, so it's kind of lost their effectiveness at least. we got three units of Panzergrounds left, so going to have to try and work out a way to keep pushing in the middle sector here in the town currently being contested again. So that it is going to tick a plus two just a little bit longer in the middle of the map there. Well, the monk up got drained so fast, so we're going to be going ahead and selling that. Meanwhile, 2A3, the only tank that is directly engaging my opponent's armor. We've got two more 2A3s on the way, and I've just got to delay them long enough for them to arrive. I can also potentially move forward this 2A3, but I really should uh, repair those entirely if possible. Furthermore, I'm bringing in some units into town. Uh, when I brought in the multiple martyrs here with the Panzergrenz, I was floating a little bit, which is why I could bring in so many because on the left hand side I was trading so well so I wasn't actually buying as much as I could have on the left. As soon as I realized that we were actually going to lose I just brought in everything I could every tick and that includes the Jaegers here and some pioneers. So I have some flamethrower pioneers in there. I've also got the tornado IDS coming in. Unfortunately it didn't manage to get off all of its cluster HE there because the missile hit it and uh, kind of prevented it from getting the kills halfway through. But the F4Fs coming in, managed to clean up another TATBV in the center here. Jaegers have managed to push forwards and get into position across the road, whilst these were all distracted by my Marders. So that worked out quite nicely, but look how close it's getting. Only 15 seconds now until our opponents win the battle. Things were getting incredibly tight. Meanwhile, I'm just trying to hold back the wave of units coming in here. Both of these TATBVs are very low on health, but I can't sit there in front of two Conker's M's. That's not going to help at all. So, how are we going to deal with this? Well, I managed to get the Jaegers in here, and they're going to kill off multiple of these BMPs. That's going to allow me to push forward the Ibsisfjordungs and get that into the sector. If I can hide it amongst all of these Jaegers, we're going to be able to capture this sector. And since the TATBVK moved out of the sector I just moved into with my Uh we are going to be able to capture that whilst the TATBVK uh, captures ours. Now I'm going to move back the Uldersfjordungs as quickly as possible, whilst the TATBVK is also going to do the same treetop kind of... <laughs> <laughs> sort of <laughs> completely copying my movement here with the leaders. Uh, we're tr both trying to capture each other's sectors, but realize it's probably better for our leaders to be in our own sectors rather than an enemy sector. Uh, my Jaegers are falling apart, so the Interfudons wouldn't have been able to stay there for very long. But I do have my F4Fs ready to go again, and if I can kill the T80 BBK, there's a good chance that I'm going to be able to get the Interfudons into that. Uh, Sexo once again, and we've managed to get two really good hits there, as you can see, onto these T-80s. Going to come back round for another go. Meanwhile, on the left-hand side, I was still fighting off those T-80s. We're really just looking for the T-80 BBK, and we do manage to find it. Meanwhile, Tornado IDS comes in for the bombing strike on the back side of that sector. That is going to push us to a plus four once again. Meanwhile, on the left, the, uh, yeah, the T-80 BB here. Currently dancing around my units. I also brought in... Oh, I actually kept these in the sky. We managed to pick off the TATB as well. So that was really good. This Ilzis Fjordong is now dancing around trying to dodge the artillery. And our opponent's currently sitting on 1999... Or like 1990. Easier way to put it. Uh, so 10 points from victory for our opponents. So, two a 3s now looking to overwhelm this TATBV. I'm of course aware of the amount of conkers in there and well T8M is going to be pretty scary. Actually ends up going for the Leopard 2A3. Ends up getting shot down by a combination of the Ronin 3s and the Gapard. Now these Leopards going to be moving up here and engaging the TATBV. We managed to clean that out so that's really good. Yeah, Afcon is going to move up and try and get rid of the uh, Igla, but all the while 
infantry has managed to find its way up into this building. And Mona My Leopard 3 does go down. So we're getting into a bit of a predicament here because if this TATBVK manages to make it into the sector and we lose control over here, then our opponents are just going to straight up win. So it was a good job that my opponent here didn't quit because it probably would have sealed the deal for the game. Instead, he's keeping on the pressure in a sector where I'm completely overextended. And by doing so, even if he has a negative KD by the end of the day uh, game, if he manages to push me out of this sector and kill off the Leopard 2A3, then you know, he's pretty much a hero for his team at this point to help finish, the, finish off the game. But I'm just hoping not to let that happen. F16 coming in here to take out the Tor, so that was really, really well done. Unfortunately, the 1A5 is going to die next to the 2A3. Leopard 2A3 still trying to hold on. But having taken out the Igla on the left here and also the Igla on the right now, the Apache is pretty free to come in and start engaging with its rockets. The F-16 still hanging about looking for more targets with its seed missile. MiG-29 does manage to land a shot, will force it back. Now Jägerfjörder just about holding on from Grimguy in this sector. The center sector here has been somewhat secured. But I've now lost the left side, so things are incredibly dicey. MiG-29 comes over after taking down the Apache, does pay for it with its life. It's really up to me to get this uh, Leopard 2A3 back in here. I can't really wait for it to be fixed up because, as I said, it's only 10 points left on the, on the uh, objective there. So F4F's coming in, looking for the missiles on target. We managed to find one. That's good. I'm hoping that the 2A3 can take advantage of that at least. Unfortunately, misses its shot. Absolutely tragic. So it's really on the F4F to save the day. Misses. Second one misses. Shot comes out of the 2A3. Finally lands on target. Fortunate for us, the T80 that was uh, against us managed to miss its own shot because it was panicked. And finally... The AT planes are hitting the mark, absolutely demolishing my opponent's forces. The SU-27S failing to kill the F4F AT as well. Manages to clean up the F4F further back. Second SU-27 coming in. Does manage to land one shot on target. Really hoping my Rollins can get the kill. Don't quite manage to do so. This SU-27 on the backside though does get taken down by my F4 FAA, so that was pretty clutch. And manages to just get out of there. Big reinforcements now coming in onto the left side of this town, as we still manage to sit on the plus four treetop, pushing desperately into the center of the town, whilst I continue to try and dismantle my opponent on the left-hand side. The 2A3 really being an absolute hero here. I managed to stop it just behind this um, I guess fertilizer container, water container thing <laughs> on the left and uh, yeah that's going to get back to the Mancat and get fixed up. So as I mentioned things are really really on a knife edge right now. Things are getting incredibly exciting as we are trying to do our best to brush our opponents across the board. Specialized Vetka have managed to force back and kill my Milan 2 here and having done so I'm going to try and replace that with some French beer. Meanwhile more Jaegers are on the way and these guys are going to push across the road here and try and take back the buildings on the other side. Moving in at close range we'll be able to kill off all of the transports at least and should be able to outnumber the Monastrauki. So this will give us a nice foothold in the opposing sector and maybe we can get a leader in there, especially with me continuing to control this left-hand side. That could potentially be a plus eight for us. Uh, so things have completely swung around now. My leopards continuing to move up. I'm forced to try and micro these leopard 2A3s like crazy in order to keep them alive. Alouette now going to move over to provide me some air recon because as you can see my recon at the front here is extremely lacking. I have recon on the left hand side for the from the Jaeger Alfgaard to check I'm not being flanked from the ridge. But otherwise all my other 2A3s are on the ground here so the Alouette is necessary in order to um, make sure we are able to target the T80s. 
So the Jaegers have managed to get all the way through here, which is really, really good to see. And then gonna continue to help reinforcing the town. But first of all, I need more recon, so that's where these furnish beer are coming in handy. Also, a new Jaeger Avkala joining in order to get into these buildings, help deal with enemy infantry, and also spot these conkers, which have been causing me issues. They do a lot of damage in the front armor of the Leopard 2A3s. Conkers M's, really, really scary. 23 penetration. So now the 2A3 leader. This 2A3 going to be engaging. Managed to take out at least one of the Conkers M squads. So Pedro Comrotti going to be trying to move into the sector. I am going to have to deal with that, of course. Bernspeer. Caught out in the open against the Spesso Vedka. <laughs> Looks like they're trying to use the, the car for cover there. Pretty cool. You know, Jaeger's now coming up against Safadi RPO. But just sheer numbers of Jaegers here, managing to get the better of these anti-infantry infantry. Now artillery coming down on top of them as well is certainly going to be helping out quite significantly. That is uh, these M109s back here from Grim Guy. Now on the left, 2A3 is trying to kill off the last Conquer Zem and try and finish off the Sepadi Kamroti before it can affect this sector. So, a little bit of an unsupported push with that leader is going to cause it to go down. He's just desperately trying to get commands in here and I'm having to move all over the place in order to avoid it. I think my Tornado IDS came in and bombed out the Spesod Vedka here. So my Fernspear were able to move in and engage, hoping that they can kill off the Eagler there, of course. Now t 80 coming in from this direction. Ta Leopard 2A3 leader finds the enemy leader. And now we're looking at that plus eight I was talking about, as we have managed to get the Jägerführer of Gremgai into this sector. It's defended by the Jägers on the top side. I've got more Marders on the way to back that up. And now looking to finish off all of the t 80 on this right-hand side. Another t 80 now coming in from this direction. Uh, has the potential to side shot my Leopard 2A3s. It was really actually smart of my opponent here to start bringing up stuff this road and uh, this road at the same time because he was able to put my side shot or put my side armor at risk. You see my Leopard 2A3 is constantly having to be microed all over the place. I was trying to trade shots across the board. And the whole idea is really just keeping the 2A3 alive. But it's also an asset that I need to use offensively in some cases. Now we're kind of reaching the same points. You can see we're up to the 1,860 points. The Marders are now moving in to try and secure this sector. And in doing so, seal the deal on the points. Only 13 seconds left till victory. The Leopard 2A3s have annihilated all of these enemy forces. The T-80 BB going up in smoke as it cooks off. That is it for this one as we hit the victory score. But is it a victory? No, it is not. It is a draw because the points were too close. But what a glorious game that was. It was a lot of fun. I would take that as a moral victory for sure. <laughs> On the left, unfortunately... Uh, I was kind of bullying my opponent, but Treetop and Destruction here pushing into the town, really just doing a good job keeping the pressure on our team and almost winning. We managed to just stop it in time and I end with a kill death of 10,195 kills to 3,900 losses in 28 minutes. Really, really crazy game. <laughs> Very intense game as well, because when I was actually playing that live, that like microing the leopards to deal with all the T eighty BVs that just constantly kept coming in was wild. Uh, but the tornado ADS managing to get some significant kills for us, particularly the conkers, the Roland threes, great support bringing in two of those like early on was really really good in this game, as it helped us shoot down other aircraft as well as deal with the Mi twenty four very early. Um, the Leopard 2A3 leader here, look at that. 
really just helping deal with all of the conkers even even though they're probably the biggest threat to this tank the leopard 203s just slicing through multiple t80 bvs there's another one there uh, this 2a3 also getting loads of kills it was a real day to be a leopard tanker because they got some crazy kills and that is your lot for today well what a crazy one that was uh really really enjoyed playing it hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it uh, thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video goodbye